Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a late game introduction to Urtuk, a turn-based strategy game by David Galera, which is not me, I'm just some dude. And let's just jump right into it. First of all, there's many different playable classes that make up your squad, not only the ones that we can see right here. As you will notice, the boons that you can pick up at the beginning of the game are kind of changing according to what weapons or equipment these guys can really equip. On top of that you can also go random or you can later unlock the vampires or the werebeasts or the who knows. For the moment we're not going to think too hard about it. We're going to take these two and choose the epic journey. Hard as hell if you win the game at this difficulty call me up for a beer. I personally have played the game for about 120 hours. Haven't managed to beat it yet. But either way. So First of all, story we can kind of skip, I believe. This is for the purpose of explaining the game mechanics, as well as give, you know, a small introduction, a small first impression. We're going to skip the intro as well. And we see the overworld map, where we basically lead our little troop of people, currently only consisting of three, into battle and maneuver them around from node to node, city to event to hopefully escape. There's currently four maps in the game and originally there was five when I started playing. Keep in mind that everything that's happening here, everything you can see is in development, not only as in it will look way better later, but as in the game has changed so much since I started playing that by the time you watch this not everything might be 100% accurate anymore. When I started playing it was version 0.13 and since then stunning works differently, bleeding has been nerfed, there are moles now doesn't matter. But let's just jump into it by going to one of the two nodes here that we can travel to. We could say, okay, there's a monster slayer here. We could save him or we could say we do not want that. We could move back as well. Notice as up here the day counter rises, the game gradually becomes harder. Now, I could say that for one reason or another I would want to go here first. Doesn't really matter for right now. I want to show you combat. So let's say yes. Okay. Here we are, we are three people against five, as it seems, and there's two allies. As you can notice here, the HP bar is red for enemies, blue for allies, and white for ourselves. We're currently in the deployment phase, where we could just say, okay, getting that monk down here and using this bottom flank would be really advantageous, but for the moment we're not going to think too hard about that either. And Apiel wants our help. He already placed some traps that will only harm the enemy and not us. It will make them bleed and it will mobilize them for two turns. And okay, here we are. Bottom, no, left side of the screen you can see the initiative order. Currently we start, then this guy will act, and then him, and then him, and so on. And how deep do I want to go into this? Speed for starters. There's a stat called agility which will partly not only affect your stamina, currently we have 82 stamina here on Urtuk, our leader, but also your order in the initiative, not only in the beginning of every turn, but also how quickly you get another turn again. Somebody with 50 speed will be acting a lot more often than somebody with 2 speed. So it's not everybody getting the turn and then everybody getting the turn again, but rather once, you're de once it's your turn again, once your speed reaches 100 again, currently we have him at 100 and in comparison who might be slow, him only at 63. Timeline ticks up until it reaches 100 and then you get your turn. All right, now theoretically, if you were to walk through this mud here, you would get a minus 25 speed for every tile that you walk through mud. If you get slowed while because you get attacked by, for example, this monk's weapon here, that's a minus 37 on speed. If you get below, I think it was minus 30, you get slowed and then every attack against you is a crit. And if you go minus 70, then you even get stunned. And that, of course, is again even worse. Now, initiative we have covered, what do we do next? Most people in the game have three movement points per turn. Some of them have the perk light feet, which means that they could rotate and then afterwards still do things. If you do not have the light feet perk, then rotating is still an option, but you will end your turn. Okay. So, what else could we do here? We already moved. We could say, okay, the hunter, for example, has the ability to throw more traps, but each trap that he throws, as well as every other ability in the game, except for very few, will cost stamina. Ortuk right now has 32 out of 82 stamina left because throwing that trap cost 50. 
Now theoretically, if we throw another one, that will still work. But then we're not only out of breath, we also will start our next turn with less stamina because of it. Unless we wait. If you don't end your turn by attacking somebody or doing anything else that ends your turn, but just wait instead, not only do you get a speed bonus for the next turn, you also recover your stamina immediately. So we kind of will start our next turn at 82, or maybe even use a stamina while it's not even our turn by helping friends that we we attack the target they attack, for example. Next one would be the priest. I'm not going to go too in-depth into all those different classes. I'm just trying to give a little bit of an overview. I could explain what feast means or quick learner or what his shatter ability is or the healing rate and how that is calculated. Safe to say there's many different abilities that are class specific. There's quite a few mechanics that people can learn that are not class specific like acid, poison, bleeding. Stunning is a little bit weapon dependent so only some classes can learn that but all right. Let's just play the game in order to see how it goes. For the moment, the priest is rather special in that he has a few abilities he can use that do not cost stamina, but rather <laughs> HP. Aegis means that the hunter here, for example, will take zero damage from the next incoming attack. Speaking of attacks, one important thing that to maybe point out. This game has very little RNG when it comes to combat. It is similar to Battle Brothers, but at the same time, there is no hit chance, there is no melee resistance. If you are a melee fighter and you attack somebody in melee, you will always hit. If you are a ranged fighter and you have free line of sight to the target, you will also always hit. If there's something like palisades or rocks or friends or whatever in between, then that will lower the hit chance and then you could hit a friend or a rock or whatever. Then RNG becomes a little bit more of, an, um, of a factor, but otherwise it's irrelevant. Then we have damage and elevation. As we can notice here, this is elevation 4 and this is elevation 5, right? While you will always hit, damage depends partly on a couple of different factors, one of them being elevation. The high ground bonus, as it is in Battle Brothers, would be here damage related. If you fight downhill, you will hit harder, and if you fight uphill, you will not as much. The same goes for range. Especially if you are not only one, but several height levels above your opponent, you, would, you will deal a lot more damage. And vice versa, if he hits you with a crossbow from five levels below, he, five levels, I think he won't deal any damage. Or maybe it's six? Something along those lines. Four levels below, he will still deal some, and then three levels below more, etc. So, we haven't exactly done too much yet. We didn't really have to deploy him down there. We're just going to get up there. And... What else did I want to cover? I'm not sure how long the video is already. Elevation... Um, I wrote myself a little bit of a... Checkbox list. Turn-based strategy, permadeath. Game is still in development. Many classes, overworld... Mutators we haven't seen. Right, maybe I'll do that in a second. Initiative, however, we have covered. Same with the RNG, or rather lack thereof. Elevation. Zone of control would be relevant. As we see... Not right now because we're too far away, but in a second. Every unit has a zone of control, or rather every melee fighter has a zone of control. That is, again, similar to Battle Brothers, but at the same time very different. Because in Battle Brothers, usually when you're next to each other and you walk away from your opponent, you will get attacked with an attack of opportunity. Not so here. You can walk away from opponents just fine unless they have you engaged, which is something that only specific classes can do. However, zones of control still cancel movement. So if we were to try and... You can't come closer because of the traps yet. Fine. If you were to come closer and we were to walk past you, let's assume that it's the crossbowman's turn and that there are no um, palisades here and that we can reach this tile. We couldn't move in a straight line because the zone of control would stop our movement right here. We could with four movement maybe move around him, but otherwise you can kind of zone them and keep them in place that way. If you're close to somebody with your back against the wall, you're not gonna move far per turn. On the other hand, however, if he want, if this assassin would want to attack our priest, he could because the crossbowman doesn't have a zone of control. He could move one, two, three, and he even has four movement and then attack us right away. Hmm. Backstabbing is important. Can I show that somewhere? Mm. Not quickly. I would need to get behind the opponent. <laughs> then again, give me a second. 
I'm gonna backstab somebody. For the moment, you are the war monk. And as such, you have the fancy ability flip. Hmm, doesn't deal any damage. And of course, backstabbing with the crossbow is a little bit awkward, but maybe we just, you know. I'm out of traps because I'm low level. All right, you have a limited number of traps. We're not going to really be able to block you off, but we have that Aegis to maybe body block for the moment. Please do not evaluate my strategic validity of choices here. But if I was to move here, then I could backstab. All you need for that is an ally right on the other side of the opponent. And that means more damage. On top of that, if we had many abilities, for example, the bleeding criticals, the poisonous criticals, etc., only trigger if you backstab or at least if you crit, right? So right now, usually we would deal 35 damage. He's a priest. Leave him. But instead it's 53. So it does hit, I think, with 50% more damage. Is that right? More or less, I'm not sure in the numbers right now, and they might change in the future anyway. But that is what backstabbing is, and backstabbing is one way to crit. Another way to crit is focus abilities. Right. I, in a new game, I can't show that because they need to reach level 4 before they reach that, but basically, with every time you get attacked and every time you attack, you generate focus, which in the end unlocks, once the bar is filled up, your focus ability. For the hunter, that would be the critical strike that we can already see, and then once we have that, we can use that ability once. Doesn't have to be on him, doesn't have to be on his turn. Can be during the war, monk, war monk's turn on the priest, theoretically. But basically, it is the hunter that needs to fill up that bar. Now, some abilities allow you to crit, some abilities allow you to taunt, stuff like that. But every class only has one. Um, on top of that, there are a couple of other ways to crit. For example, you could attack somebody who's slowed down or stunned, right? And I feel like there's one that I'm right now forgetting. So let's just move on. What else did I want to cover? Perks? Right, I mean, obviously. With that, we have... I mean, many of these perks... I should cover something in particular. Uh, many of these perks are class-specific. For example, every hunter will always be light feet. What the hell is this? I'll come to that in a second. Every priest, I believe will always have Aegis as his focus ability unless we get to a mutator. I'll check the mutators as we close this video out. Um, but here, yeah, every priest will have feast, every priest will have light feet. Not sure on the quick learner, but I think so. On top of that, we have somebody specific here, which in this case is actually our crossbow man. He is Urtuk. He is our leader, our main protagonist. And as such, he was mutated because of story reasons. And that mutation is slowly transforming him and changing him and giving him new abilities, but also lowering his HP in the process. It cannot kill him, however. This is not like a Doom Clock. There are other Doom Clocks, or rather, the game just gets harder as you play, so if you take too long, it might become rather rough. Then again, the more experience you gain, the more loot you get, sticking around is not always a bad idea. It's not as simple as you might already expect. Now, all of these here are standard classes, right? Except for the mutation, but always critical strike, always light feet on the, and feast on the priest, etc. This here is a special talent that he has and that we might find out about as we play. For example, he could be strong against ranged. Are you strong against ranged? No. If he was, then it would have been strong versus question mark, one out of 20. We learn to be strong against ranged, if we have a talent for that, during combat. And we learn what our talents are during combat. On top of that, there's a couple of abilities that everybody can learn, but still has to learn during combat. For example, if you crit after waiting, you learn to be patient. First you wait, you end your turn, and then right afterwards you would like to find a target and crit them with the same character in the turn directly afterwards. Let's not, eh, is, let's not think too hard about this. But then you learn patience one out of three. Once you do that three times, you learn to be patient permanently. And then every time you wait, you actually also guarantee the next class, no matter if, uh, the, the next turn, no matter if you backstab or if you attack a slowed or stunned person or whatever, you will always crit them. Other reason, uh, other things would be, for example, poison resistance. If you get poisoned twice in the same turn, then you learn and make progress towards getting immune to poison. One out of six takes a while until you really get that. 
but learning all those abilities during combat is really fun and discovering who's strong against what and then using that to your advantage is really cool too. Now one thing I wanted to um, show you towards the end was the mutators. I'm retreating here just to get out of combat again. Sadly everybody got wounded that way. I started the fight with five medicine. So right now I could say okay we're took you got wounded I heal you for the next four days he will still be wounded and if during that time he fights and gets killed again he's dead and in Urtuk's case that even means game over everybody else can be replaced um, by the way if he heals and then later gets wounded again next time healing the injury will be five days instead of four and then afterwards six at least currently this is rather new and I'm not sure if that will you know stay that way but for the moment that's the case um, that is not what I wanted to show you though. I wanted to show the inventory. And as you can see, it is rather bare bones. Ultuk can only equip a crossbow. There's no hat slot here or armor or anything like that, but there's four slots underneath. And I have an improviser here, which is a normal mutator. Those go into one of the first three slots. And I also have a focus ability mutator here, in this case last stand, which changes the focus ability. Okay, I mean, First we would have to get to level 4, but then last stand would trigger once the bar is filled up instead of the critical ability that we had in here before. And then we could cast that again on somebody. So we have one focus ability mutator slot where we can replace. And then we have three for normal mutators. In the case of improviser, let's say we would put that in and we would already be level 4. When we unlock the critical strike focus ability and fill a bar up and have that available to cast on someone, it also casts it on himself. Okay, could be worth it. At the same time, we notice here it's a level 4. That's also very new. Mutators can be merged, and at level 1, they always give minus 10% max HP. But then you merge two of them together, and you get a level 2, which is only minus 6% currently, etc. So not only is it important what do you give your people and how well does it synergize and so on, but also what is even worth equipping and what is worth investing life essence, as it is called, into in order to max it, upgrade it, and make it even more powerful. In my current run that I have going, I have Stalwart, an ability that makes you mo well immune to knockback and the like, uh, on everybody. And I'm just I keep gathering Stalwart all over the place because I want to upgrade it in order to give them HP bonuses that way as well. Even though many other abilities that I could have gotten, I kind of neglected just for the sake of pumping more life essence into the Stalwart. Might not be smart, might not work, but there's lots of interesting choices to make with only those four slots here. When it comes to the Iron Crossbow, I mean, not every character is the same. All three of these only have a weapon, but there are some that have armor, which I haven't mentioned at all. How long is this video? <laughs> um, some have helmets or armor or shields as well, but that's class-specific, and armored characters usually take half damage from all sources until the armor breaks. And if it breaks, it's gone, at least for that combat. But if it doesn't, then it recovers every time you get your turn, 25% of its durability. And on top of that, of course, the quicker you are, the more often you get your turn, the quicker your armor theoretically regenerates. So there's a couple of things you can do there too. For the moment, I started this without knowing how long it would go. And I hoped it wouldn't go that long. I'm gonna end now. Alright, thank you for watching. And the game is awesome.